Merry Christmas from Play PS5 and our gift to you are discussions about Cyberpunk 2077, why Adam doesn't like Horizon Zero Dawn, the newest PS5 info, and some free giveaways. Sit by the old tide, grab some nog, and listen to episode 17 of Play PS5, the podcast. Ho, 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 PlayStation, PS5, boys for the girls and toys for the boys, play PS5 is live, ho, Adam, it's Christmas, are we even recording on Christmas, I don't know, this might be our de facto Christmas episode, but how are you feeling today, Adam? Well, here's the thing, it's beautiful, I'm excited for Christmas, it is Christmas time, it is hard not to love Christmas, it is hard not to love the PS5. However, Alex, I will say I am coming into beginning this episode with a bit of a Scrooge because we're going to be talking about cyberpunk and how that has not gone over well. Maybe one of the worst, worst releases I've ever seen in my life. And then a very surprisingly bad beat on Horizon Zero Dawn. And then the second segment, we're going to talk about Days Gone Until Dawn. And then listener feedback, some news, all that good stuff. But I'm ready to get started. This probably will be our Christmas episode because, you know, uh, Christmas is on a Friday. That's typically (laughs) when we record. And I feel like, you know, our families would not be... Probably not going to be recording on Christmas. Sorry, yeah. guys. Maybe you'll catch us online playing PlayStation Five yeah. or something. Your, your daughter, you know, maybe your daughter's going to be in your massage there, uh. and you're going to be <laughs> try, trying to have a podcast. You're going to have your 3D printer in the background running. It's going to sound like Pee Wee's Playhouse up in your house, and uh, that's not good for audio. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Adam, hit me up with your gamer juice, man. What do you What do you got this this holiday season? Okay, so. I love me some nog, but here's the thing, folks. I make home, typically homemade eggnog, but sometimes it's not realistic. There's a lot that goes into it and you just don't have the time. So I'm going to be here to show you how you can take some Walmart, Kroger, Meyer, typical eggnog, either Southern Comfort or even the cheaper crap that you can just buy and turn it into something that is very close to homemade eggnog it could fool people so first you just simply obviously need your normal eggnog they put some spices in there they don't put enough let's be honest so you want a decent low bam out of nutmeg in there then cinnamon it's one that people don't put cinnamon in eggnog for some reason they put a lot of nutmeg but cinnamon i think is definitely clutch it tastes very good it's a complimentary flavor for eggnog and then my favorite mouthwash bourbon Oh. <laughs> bullet bourbon i always put it in my eggnog it has a kick to it it really takes the eggnog to the next i'm not even joking i don't even really like bourbon or drinking that much but this stuff is off the hook and you know be liberal with it be liberal with it you know it it's gonna taste good it's the holidays ho 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 baby get those jollies off so obviously whatever you're using you want to shake her shake her up real good Shake her up, but you don't need to go absolutely nuts. Then in the meantime, get your favorite mug. I've got the Chevy Chase's Christmas Vacation Moose Mug. That is definitely my favorite. It is smaller, so I don't get crunk off eggnog as quickly. You know, typically I still go through quite a bit. You just have that nice little pour up in there. You see the specks of the spice. You smell not just the eggnog, but the bullet bourbon. That's effing good stuff, baby. So that's why I'm sipping on. If I get if I get a little loopy by the end, <laughs> the nog took me to town, baby. So beat that, you're, Alex. You're always loopy to a degree. Adam, I went the other direction. You actually had something pretty good for your gamer juice this week. I went to the come and go and just tried. I went there with the goal of finding the dumbest drink I could find. What is the biggest stupid dr- Sorry to anybody that likes this. All right. I apologize. But I just saw this as like, that's dumb. L- literally... Literally Mountain Dew game fuel. Uh, char- charged Berry Blast for men, I guess. Um, and apparently if I drink this, I'm going to get two two experience points for 15 minutes. I don't know if that's two times the experience points for 15 minutes. Oh, in, in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And it's got Ooh. this stupid, obnoxious can open thing here. I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. 
it's going to taste like trash. It's going to make me feel like trash. So Adam and I are both going to get trashed on this episode of Play PS5, but in different ways. I don't even know if how I to... already sucked down a whole moose mug of eggnog. I'm going to be wiped by a segment to... two. It says I have to slide it? What is oh this? Oh, my gosh. It says slide and then pull and then slide. Ah! What the? What? That's the stupidest game fuel down the hatch. Oh, it tastes exactly like you'd think it tastes. AKA Adam. like like something a kid like something I would drink staying up late playing video games. <laughs> that's perfect because <laughs> I hope that's what you're doing tonight. So Alex, last call for the listeners. And maybe not last call. If we have a few left, maybe we could give them after Christmas. We still have a few Christmas cards left. So if you want one email contact at play ps5 podcast.com we also have twitter we have youtube if you want one get a hold of us we will send it to you for free limited supply so if you want it and you haven't gotten one yet you know you you better get to us and And, and listen listen here nihau bitches i know you guys across the pond across the oceans and lakes listening to us thinking they're not going to ship internationally we will ship it internationally we don't even care we don't care because we need you guys we need us to be on your fridges we are worldwide we're going worldwide with this operation that's all right i'm surprised i haven't sent a card to nigeria yet i'm waiting for it <laughs> yeah there's a prince if you send him a card he'll send you 50 million cards back and if you're from albania i'm gonna hit on you because <laughs> that's one of the countries that makes some <laughs> Or real pretty women, and I'm What's, single. Where, where's this coming from, Adam? <laughs> Did you accidentally Google Albanian women recently? Oh no, they're just. I think it's I known said, they're they're I very said, they're I've, very I've, nice. I've literally, I've literally never heard that stereotype in my entire life. What is is the bourbon getting to you already, dude? Uh, the vet and nice. That's I feel Austin like I have Powers, to Google though. Albanian women while you're talking about Yeah, do it. Okay, um, while you are at, actually, this is a horrible time to say this because now everyone's looking up Albanian women. <laughs> Trust me, you're, you'll thank me. But we are also giving away for Christmas because we, we love you. We love Christmas. A free year of PlayStation Plus It is going to be a download code. So regardless of where you are, we'll just email you code. So here's what you got to do. You can email us at contact at playps5podcast.com or comment and subscribe on our YouTube page, our channel. You could say that Alex's face looks like Huckleberry Finn's dirty sock. You can say that your auntie really likes Adam's homemade nog, or you could just say you love us. It doesn't matter what you say, regardless, you will be in for the running. The winner will be announced randomly and on Christmas Day. So everyone has an equal chance. I can't wait. Everyone wants PlayStation Plus. The one caveat is you have to play games with Alex. He has like two PlayStation friends, and I'm both of them. So that's that's the only the only caveat there. Adam, uh, yes, please send us send us information. Enter into this competition. We want to send you a PlayStation Plus 12 year coach. You can play some of the PS4 games that are on PlayStation Plus Classic, and some of them are enhanced for your PlayStation 5. Adam, I just looked up Albanian women. I'll be honest, they look like normal women, but I did find 10 dating facts that you must know about Albanian women. Maybe I'll litter them throughout the podcast today. Number one, just so you know, Adam, family comes first for Albanian women. Now, I know you, you're not much of a family man, but if you are interested in Albanian women, family comes first. So you need to get in family mode, Adam. And with that, Adam, I want you to... Uh, I can't... Can- I, we are going to talk about PlayStation, folks. We really are. But Alex, whether you realize this or not, I actually have dated an Albanian lady. Uh, it was when I lived in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, it was great. We went to some hockey games. That was the first date I took her on. She actually stole a kitten. Uh, on that date, she was telling me that she, uh, that's when she first announced, I forgot what the cat's name was now, but she was walking home one day and the kitten was in someone's yard with a collar on and she stole it, took it back to her house, raised it up to a full grown cat. A uh, cat loved her, but don't mess with their family this- or their cats because they'll steal your cat. Yeah, this is a, uh, and this is in line with rule number 10 that you must know. <laughs> <laughs> they're questionable first relationships so if you were her first relationship that's a questionable move because she's going to steal cats from you yeah so 
nuts. So I, I can't just, believe I'm just now here. This is so much interesting stuff, Adam. We should have a podcast about you dating Albanian women, but this is not that podcast. This podcast is Play PS5 podcast, and you've promised to be a little bit of a Scrooge this evening, Adam. Um, should, should we start off with with my my game Cyberpunk, or should we talk about your Scroogedom first? You know. I mean, I'm Scrooge about both of them. Let's talk about Cyberpunk, because this is obviously a big release. And for me personally, you have a little more rich history in terms of your gaming background. But this is the biggest cluster F I have ever seen in a game. It is actually laughable. First of all, I have never seen a game more hyped, more advertised, yeah. more marketed. It's There are posters on Best Buy and GameStop and Thursday Night Football and ESPN.com. It's everywhere. And then for it to be just an utter mess on almost all consoles, I have a hard time thinking on how was it? um, Was it Project Red or what's their name? CD Project Red, yeah. CD. I thought CD was in there. I have a hard time seeing how they are going to come back from this time so, feels all, but I mean, this is bad, right? Yeah. So I, I think it'd, it'd be interesting just to clarify why it was so hyped. So CD project red, they're this Polish game development company. They weren't huge. Um, they took on the rights of this novel, this novel series called the Witcher. They released the first game. It got decent reviews. People liked the story because it was a story-based RPG, but it was kind of a clunky PC RPG. The combat wasn't great. Uh, It kind of took things in a different aspect. You had to plan your battles a lot more than you do in most RPGs, but people enjoyed it for the most part, at least enough to make The Witcher 2, which was the sequel. Um, It carried on some of those story elements. I think the story had a bit less focus, and they focused more on the gameplay, and it was a bit more fleshed out. People enjoyed that more. I think it was more console-friendly, too, so it was more popular. Um, Kind of compounding. So so they're building up a head of steam there, kind of compounding on that experience they had. They finally released The Witcher 3 last generation, which is one of the most widely acclaimed, widely praised, um, just e- extremely successful game. The gameplay was good. The writing was good. The graphics and everything was good. Every People universally praised almost every aspect of this game, and for good reason. Um, the, the wild success of The Witcher 3 led CD Projekt Red to become this ridiculously profitable company. Um, They went public, and when they went public, people just bought their stock up like crazy, which overvalued the company. So now this company is just swimming in dollars off the assumption that the next thing they release, next major title they release, is going to be this massive wild success because they have more money than anybody now. They can do whatever they want, and they're not going to be limited by funds. So that kind of leads into the the Cyberpunk 2077. Now, before PlayStation 4 came out, CD Projekt Red announced that they had the rights to make a Cyberpunk 2077 game. Cyberpunk 2077 is kind of an old license, I believe. I don't know too much about it, but it's back in the D&D days. People are playing this, you know, fantasy stuff. Well, a tabletop RPG called Cyberpunk came out and it explored this whole cyberpunk, sci-fi, you know, mega corporate motif. Um, and people were really excited because they loved what happened with The Witcher and Witcher 3 and how that was realized as a video game. And they were, everyone was excited to see, oh, let's take this similar setting and have this amazing, wonderful development group uh, flesh that out as well. What, In hindsight, I think maybe we should have realized, all right, their first attempt at making an RPG was clunky and messy, but the writing was all right. And that, it seems like the same thing we're seeing with cyberpunk right now. It's their first attempt at making like a first person shooter and it's clunky and it's messy, but the writing seems like it's all right. So we kind of should have known that, but then again, you know, they've been developing this since before the PS4 came out, they should have known better. So that, that just kind of leads into why it was so ridiculously hyped. Adam, do you have any experience with cyberpunk stuff at all? Do you know what that means? No, I had no clue. Honestly, I think we've even been talking about on this podcast and that it was a hard wait for me until PS5, like mm-hmm. a patch. And then I don't really like the idea of it. Like, the, it seems very edgy and I'm not an edgy guy. Like, I've been told you can you can uh, customize your genitals and penis, you, can, yeah. you can be, um, you know... I don't know, all types of different genders and people just look uh, very um, punkish. Yeah. Punk. Yeah. yeah, They look very punkish. I don't like that. I don't really get the gameplay. 
It's yeah. not my style. It's not something I feel like I would have liked. I would have played it once PS5 it came out for that, you know, and had uh, upgrades. But I, you know, I don't know. So I don't it's, know much about this. I'm honestly not very interested. I'm even less interested now, though. Yeah, I mean, thematically, it's very nerdy stuff. Like, think about like the Matrix. Um, you know, I just got done reading the Neuromancer with the Sprawl trilogy uh, by William Gibson. Neuromancer is like the first one, kind of kicked off this entire genre and so I, it's really right in my lane of stuff that i like it's talking about ai and computers and people hacking into the network and the internet taking over things really cool stuff really fun stuff to explore thematically and this game kind of dives into that so um yeah you might not like the aesthetics and adam you know in the game you can pick to be one of three more quote unquote factions you can be a nomad thinking like mad max or something i don't think that's up your alley that's what i picked with my first character second you could be a street kid so you're just kind of like some street urchin that lives in the city and you you know you're you're tough and you're, you're street wise and you're in with the gangs and stuff and you're super punkish the leather jacket and you get the mohawk and the crazy color hair still don't think that's quite your motif adam you would be corpo and now in the cyberpunk and this whole steampunk cyberpunk motif the idea is that corporations have taken over they're they're more or less bigger than the government and they kind of own everything and run everything and you would be one of those corporate stooges adam so there is something for you in this game this straight laced uh nerdy type with a stick up his butt um on to what you were talking about with the character creation when i played the game i made my character i tried to make the nomad i have a hard time figuring out how to make a character that i would like to look at i can't model it after myself because i want to stare at myself I don't want to try to make something cool because then I just feel cheesy. So I usually just mash the randomize button until I get something random that kind of fits with my palette. I did that. I mashed the randomize button and then I scrolled down to the dick option and gave him the biggest penis I could, which still wasn't huge, but fine. That's cool. Whatever. It was good. Um, and then I clicked. Okay. I was like, yeah, this is great. I, you're not, I thought, first of all, I thought I was never going to see dude's penis ever. Cause why would I, it's a first it person showed shoot. an actual penis. Oh, it just dangling dongling. Yeah. Just why? Things. Okay. Well, hold on. I thought, I thought for sure I'd never see it. So I didn't care. I just thought it was funny. Um, and then I started the game and like I said, it's first person shooter. I didn't expect the elements that I randomized. The one thing you're going to see in the game a lot is your hands. Cause it's a first person shooter. And my character got randomized with these freakish long girly fingernails so girly and speaking to the glitches of the game and long and that they're poking through the gloves that my character's wearing so like the, the fingernails are clipping through the gloves that i had my character wear it just looked weird and it felt weird to see these girly hands with fingernails talking with like this gruff mad max voice so th that kind of put me off initially um and then you go through the game, you have this intro where you kind of meet your buddy Jackson Wells, which regardless of which faction you pick, he's going to be the guy that you're running alongside with. And you kind of get introduced to the story and the themes. You go in, try to rescue some girl who's OD'd. You jack into her terminal that's inside, like the side of her head. She's got some insurance policy that affects your terminal. Uh, and you get a taste of the combat. The combat, like I said, first person shooter. It's RPG, so there's some dice rolling in the background, but there's still headshots and stuff. Gives you bonus effect. If you played something like Fallout Three, Fallout Four, it, it feels kind of like that, a little bit Mass Effect. But there's also this element of like cyber hacking stuff, where you can go into this more or less slow motion bullet time mode, where you can hack into your enemies. You can cause their, you can cause them to go blind. You can stun them. You can hack, uh, you know, nearby cameras, and you can do things to distract them, so you can sneak up on them and kill them. It's a really fun element that adds a little twist to the gameplay, which I really enjoyed. Of course, you, it, it's more or less just like magic, but it's in the cyberpunk universe. Instead of magic, there's network hacking. Um, so all that happened. You kick off the story, and then I went back to my hotel. And this is when the glitches started to happen in the game, which is what the game is notorious for. I went back to the hotel. I wanted to see what my guy looked like because I had picked up some clothes or something like that. So I go to the bathroom and I hit a button uh, to look in the mirror and my dude's completely naked, completely naked. And I'm wondering, have I been running around naked the whole time? What happened to all of the clothes that I put on? And no, I, the clothes are on. My armor rating is high. I put on a baseball hat and every, everything's there. It says it's equipped. And then I go back to the mirror completely naked i can see everything so the game just has a really hard time knowing what's going on and it just defaults to show you naked um move further along in the game you go to some guy who upgrades some of your neural stuff that's going on this computer in your head uh and it, it cuts out a bit because he implants new eyes and so you see through these new eyes that are going to be looking at you again for some reason just sitting there on a couch completely naked 
and I don't know why. And then it goes back to the normal mode and I look down and I can see my shirt and pants on. Maybe it's a plot twist that I don't know that you're naked the whole time and you don't realize it. But it's just an example of the kind of glitches that you run into. Other weird glitches. I mean, I've seen footage of it. People just spawning in the middle of nowhere, like in the sky and then falling down in a car down into the sky out of nowhere. Um, there was a funny video of a dude jumping off of like a bridge to, and he testing out fall damage, jumping off a bridge. And then when he did it, somebody, some NPC character jumped off of a building and killed themselves for some reason. I don't get it. It's just crazy stuff like that. There's, you know, animations locking up. There's characters T posing. The game just feels wholly broken. Uh, you know, you have a car you can drive around in the city. The driving looks real clunky, especially in cutscenes. It just looks like a 2D car. Like if you're driving a Hot Wheels car around and your house is a toy, everything's turning on a dime and, uh, you know, the wheels aren't really moving. It just feels odd. Um, so, yeah, it, the game's a broken mess. Sorry, I'm rambling. I'm trying to give you a taste of what the game is like, Adam. <laughs> I don't, I don't care about what the game is like. Yeah, Everyone okay. knows the game is a piece of crap. I think the better conversation is diving into one. They there's is there a way that they didn't know that on consoles this game? So from what I've heard, and you can correct me because I I'm going by what people on Reddit and all the other crap say. So on PCs, the game works all right. It seems like upper level consoles, Series X, the PS5, it does all right. I think you said on Stadia it was doing all right, but PS4 and whatever generation of Xbox is simultaneous with the PS4, those are garbage. So is there a way that they didn't know that this game was that buggy and that broken? So or do I, you, yeah. They had to have known, first of all. They, they That's had why to I was like, yeah, how does yeah. this pass? And uh, yeah, so they, this last delay that they had when they delayed it to December 10th, you know, from November, this last minute delay that everybody's worried about, they said they did it to get the consoles working on, on last generation consoles. So that, that right there is kind of a red flag, but we just thought, okay, yeah, the game's, the game was in development since before the PlayStation 4 came out. So it, it primarily should have been a PlayStation 4 game or Xbox One game that just had enhancements on the next gen consoles. Um, but obviously, they obviously knew that this game had issues on consoles because they did not give out console review codes. Any reviewers, that, any reviews that you read of the game, uh, especially prior to the game coming out, it was people playing it on like a pretty beefy PC. Even then, people had glitches and stuff, but the game was pretty and they could enjoy it for the most part without issues. But when you start playing on an original PS4 or something like that, you get horrible issues like the AI just doesn't work. Um textures don't load so everybody looks like a blurry blobby mess clunky mess um just whatever issues i had with glitches playing on the playstation 5 it's like tenfold on the ps4 just because everything can't process fast enough can't load fast enough it can't do anything fast enough and all all that just compounds uh i will say like you said i played this on stadia and i played it on ps5 um it plays it plays mostly fine like it's okay i've heard about people having crashes like every hour really the issue is i know how pretty this game can be because i've seen the pc screenshots and i know the playstation 5 is really powerful and it should be able to get those screenshots and put it out but they haven't released a ps5 version i'm playing the ps4 version with just some ps5 boost as it offers some stability so i kind of don't want to touch it until we have an actual like real ps5 version which is disappointing because I, you know, I paid full price for the game and now I'm just sitting on it. And by the time the PS5 version comes out, it's going to be, you know, 20 bucks or less because nobody's, everybody's pissed off of the game. Nobody's buying it. Yeah. And my thing is to, I don't know, understand, I understand the predicament that they're in, but I feel like one giving the way they did it <clears throat> as in the release, the fact that they gave the codes out for PC only the fact that all of the gameplay, everything they discussed, all of the reviews were all done on the optimized scenario, knowing that the majority of people are probably going to be playing this on consoles, or at least a very large majority of them, and that it was going to be buggy, and yet not mentioning it. I feel like that's a bad PR move. I would have much rather them given the codes for the PC out and just being honest and being like, I know it would be tough to do and people would still be mad, but I would like th this where they send out another release and say, hey, 
PC is good. The others are buggy and we're working through mixes or fixes and patches. You're going to have to be patient with us. It's not up to standards rather than trying to brush it under, have this huge release. And now millions of people are angry and they have a product and they're getting refunds and it's taken off the PlayStation store. I mean, I really don't know this game's done. I can't imagine it coming back. And I have a hard time thinking that project red is going to come back maybe on the merits of Witcher three, they may still be able to, you know, bring it back, but I just, what a nightmare. So I think this is the issue with the, the thing I mentioned earlier where they went public and they were extremely overvalued, which means now, now they have shareholders to compete with. They have shareholders to please. uh, And they have like a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that their shareholders money is preserved. And so, In this situation where you have a game that's promised on PS4, promised on Xbox One, and promised on PC, and it's highly touted, you you reach a point where we have to, you know, at the end of this quarter, we have to post sales figures and we have to post profits and numbers that are going to make it worth all these people investing in our company, or else we're going to lose billions of dollars for people selling our stock. Um, so they kind of got themselves in a bind that way because not only now they don't answer to the gamers and then the publishers or whatever, they're self-published now. They they answer to the stockholders, which really screws them over because it's not like another video game company where you have five different IPs, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different IPs to you know balance off of like Nintendo or Sony or EA. They have The Witcher and they have CD Pro, or they have The Witcher and they have Cyberpunk, and that's pretty much all they have. Um as for can they come back from this? <clears throat> you know, I I can't think of a game that has launched worse than this. I can think of some comparable situations. One is uh, No Man's Sky. It had a similar issue where they had tons of money and immense amounts of hype. And it released. And the community was spit, split maybe 50-50 on whether or not it warranted the hype a lot of people were fine with what it was a lot of people were really upset that it wasn't what they expected um but the game wasn't broken the game worked it was just missing features that people wanted but it still worked and no man's sky has been a roaring success since they've come back they've added so many awesome patches the game is just a a masterpiece of uh you know redemption in terms of game development and so my hats off to them that is a path the cyber or CD Projekt Red can go down, but they're starting off with a broken mess. So they have to fix the broken mess first and then clean up what's left and then re-earn a lot of that goodwill that they burnt. Um, the other option is go the Fallout 76 route, which is another game that launched. Um, people really had a lot of disdain for it because it just seemed not quite what anybody wanted. Um, now that game, I feel like operates on the minimum, the bare bones profit margin. Bethesda's not trying to make get goodwill off Fallout 76. I think Bethesda realized, hey, we can do just this little bit and break even and just keep breaking even off this thing. So just keep moving forward with the small fan base that we have. I, I don't think Cyberpunk's going to have that ability because Fallout 76 is like a game of service. Uh, same with Anthem, another game with a similar situation. They're games of service. Cyberpunk isn't a games as a service game. So there's no... There's no continuation aside from DLC or something like that. There's no people who get addicted and come back over and over again. This is a game with, you know, 30, 40 hour story. And when you play it, you've kind of seen what you need to see. So I, I don't know what they're going to do unless they just expect a huge bump when the PlayStation five version comes out, but nobody's going to expect it to do well. Nobody's going to expect it to run well. So I, I really don't know. And it's a shame. I want it to do well. I I want this game to be good because I like what I see but I just don't want to go further because I don't want to get burned and I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if in January there's nothing else and the PS five upgrade comes out, I might try it, but I wouldn't be, if I got a refund, there is no way I would be going back for it. All these people are asking for refunds. I cannot imagine them being like at some point in the future. Oh, okay. Let me give that another shot. I just don't see it. Um, And the other thing too is you kind of mentioned a little bit, is this more of an issue of, okay, bad management, 
the thing with the the stocks and them going public a bad scenario or is this a cross gen game issue Hmm, that's a good question i think man so management's obviously an issue because there it has notorious for crunch time they had all these delays they obviously have some higher ups that seem out of touch with game development probably some suits that are just there to run a business and not there to make games um which you know sometimes that's a good thing i don't think it's a good thing in this situation for just one development studio like this so i think that's part of the issue is management and business i do think you're right in that part of the issue is uh trying to straddle across gins i mean We've seen this before. I think it was Batman. A Batman game had some issues going cross-gen. I think we've seen some Assassin's Creed games just get outright canceled uh, trying to go cross-gen. Um, but then again, we have things like Spider-Man Miles Morales, which runs just fine on PlayStation 4. It's just a bit slower. It doesn't look as pretty, but it, it does the job. Um, and then on the PS5 version, it's working great. So I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, that's that's the question. Why is the game running so poorly on PlayStation 4 when it had to have been developed for the PlayStation 4 for the past seven years? Because it was announced beforehand. So who knows what's going on? I'm, I'm wondering if they just thought we're going to develop this game on PC and then, it, you know, in the last year, we're going to port it over to PS4 and everything's going to be great. And then they walk down that road and PS5 is coming out and they're like, well, crap, we've developed, we've overdeveloped this game for this next generation set of hardware. And we've promised that it's going to come out on a PS4 and they really shot themselves in the foot because the shareholders need all those sales across the generations. So let's just chalk it up to management because they're not going to listen to this podcast anyways. If they do, they should hire me. I'll help them out. I feel like, I mean, this is horribly biased. Because, of course, I have a PS5. But I wish (laughs) these people would focus now on the future gen. You would think Sony at some point would also want them to put all of their efforts on the PS5 because that's going to usher and convince consumers I have to upgrade. I know some are going to be ticked because everything's about playing older games and backwards compatibility. But I would much rather have a ps5 game that actually worked and was actually out for what's supposed to be the next generation than a horribly designed game for the last gen that you now who has a ps5 has to play i would be angry in a sense that i purchased this ps5 and now what after the launch titles you have four games you can play and not, I can't play anything else now. What is that? You spent $500 for this new next gen and you're not going to get any games for it for months down the road. That sucks. It, I know, I'm sure it, it's it is a way certainly, it is, but... No, yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty annoying. And it, I've been losing a lot of steam for my hype for the PS5 just because there hasn't been anything coming out that's like just PS5. And, oh, I can only play it on this. Last game that I played that was only on PS5 was Godfall. Yeah, It was just... It's just God so, fart, art fall. God, God fart, yeah. It's just so frustrating. I mean, Demon Souls, that's excellent, great. It's PS5 game, PS5 exclusive. But beyond that, we're, you're really running out of stuff that's only on PS5, really showcases the PS5, and doesn't have a little bit of it being held back so that it can run on PS4 as well. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't know. So kind of a segue into what that discussion was. And part of the reason why I'm saying I'm a Scrooge is one of the games. So I, we just mentioned there aren't that many PS5 games that I'm uber interested in at this point. The ones I have been, I've already played. And so I was like, this is a good time to play some of the PS4 games that I need to play, that I need to catch up on, or that I was significantly interested in. So one of those games is Horizon Zero Dawn, as because Forbidden West is coming out for the PS5 here not too long, sometime this year. Well, you know, 2021. And it is a story driven game. And so I need to know what happens in the first game to be able to play that one. And I mean, it is one of my most anticipated titles of 2021. So I started playing horizon zero dawn. I don't want to take a lot of time here. This isn't supposed to be a review, but I'm going to run through my initial thoughts here, Alex. I'm not going to expound too much on them and then give you the ability to answer questions or maybe address some of the issues I feel Mm -hmm. that I'm having. So the game, I was insanely hyped to begin Horizon Zero Dawn. I had no qualms. I had no, 
uh, reservations. I thought everything was going to be fantastic. I knew in my heart it was going to be an awesome game. Even when I bought it, the local game store guy said, this is my favorite game of all time. Everything I read, it's PlayStation Gold Edition. It's what, I mean, it's really, everything is great. So I was super hyped playing it. And I'm not sure why, Alex, but it is bad. It has all the components of a good game, but it just isn't. You know, sometimes there's a game... The way I ultimately grade a game is when I'm sitting there, do I want to play it? And the answer is I'm maybe 10 hours in something. I I didn't take a look. I'm a decent way in. And no, I do not want to play it. First of all, the plot is about the main character, Aloy. She is in this world. It's futuristic world that you know, there's different types of people. And then the, the world's kind of like not overrun, but there are large machines living on the world in the earth with us, with the humans. And they kind of get along all this garbage. So she is trying to learn. She has like a mysterious past. She doesn't know who her mom is. She doesn't know where she came from. She's trying to learn what her past was, where she came from, all that stuff. That is interesting. I, I think it's good, but the issue is, they build the plot by having one main branch. It's kind of like a tree. The main branch, uh, it, or, you know, the actual thick part of a tree is the main plot. But then to gain experience and to progress in the game, you got to do so many side quests. And each of those have, it's like a side plot. So then obviously your branches start going out and all the, unlike a beautiful tree that when leaves grow in those branches, you have a beautiful, you know, art of of nature. Like it's beautiful. This game is effing garbage. Instead of leaves, you have dirty socks or jock straps growing. It's, it's horrible. I care about the main plot. I don't care about anything else. The combat is super, super fun. Very well done, but it's just simply it's too hard. The difficulty scale is beyond jacked up. I don't know what they did. The game started at reasonable level and then it got insanely easy. I'm playing on normal mode, you know, nothing special and insanely easy. Then got like reasonable, then got insanely easy again. And now is in in freaking possible and yes it is a game that you got to learn about each of the the animals and the machines and what's the best way to attack them but there's some weapons that even though they're supposed to be useful are complete garbage with them i mean i'm to the point where i went and i did every side quest i could so i am way overpowered the level i am is way above what it's telling me i need to be to do this certain mission this certain quest And I am getting ransacked because every enemy encounter is an absolute slog. It's one of those stupid games that although you get better, you get better equipment, your level rises, it doesn't matter. Even though it's the same machine, they jack their power up too. So really you gain nothing by becoming stronger, which is infuriating. If I am stronger and more experienced, I have better weapons and I see the same machine, I should be able to kill that machine in one hit. That's not how it is. It's infuriating. And the fact that every enemy encounter, there's no easy battle. It's so incredibly annoying. And yes, sometimes you can just sneak past them. Most of the time you can't. And the final nail in the coffin is like I told you, I'm sitting there right now. I'm sitting here. I'm saying, do I want to play that game? And I don't. I do not want to play it ever again. I'm probably going to finish it because, again, Forbidden West, and I feel like I don't know how close I am, but I dead serious would rather play Heroes of Hammerwatch. And that that's not like a knock on Heroes of Hammerwatch. That's just saying a very simplistic game with not great graphics, not that novel of an idea, but done better. I, I don't know what it is. I really, I hate Horizon Zero Dawn. I do not want to play it. I do not have fun playing the game. I don't know what to do. Maybe after four months, if I play one hour here or there, I can finish it. But (laughs) I don't know, Alex. It's bad. So, I mean, I just want to ask a couple things about the game. Is there like crafting and cooking in the game? 
crafting yeah you every time you kill something you gain a bunch of resources and yeah you got to farm those to make certain type of arrows or bombs or all this stuff yeah yeah i I think if you're going to enjoy a game then yeah certainly cooking or crafting something like that is a must um what about like the appearance does the game look really good or the graphics the graphics good yeah the game looks good i would have it's hard to tell, you know, at some point when graphics are good enough, you really have to have a keen eye to be like, oh, that's PS5 upgraded. But if you would have told me it's not upgraded by the PS5 to my knowledge, but yeah, it looks like it could I have a locked frame rate or something like that. But that yeah, might, I mean, it looks it looks very good. I'm definitely <clears throat> impressed with the graphics. So that I'm, like I said, very impressed with. Would you would you say that maybe the reputation of this game has kind of got you overhyped? Like is 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 how this game is received the reputation of the game is it important for you? I don't think it's important because I definitely am pretty firm in my stances, opinions, and knowing what I like. But I will say it it gave me a lot of hope, I guess. Like I really did not anticipate anything other than me loving this game and coming out of it being pumped for Forbidden West. Hmm. And um- it's it it has i don't know what it it's missing like it's just not fun maybe the other thing i'm going to try to do and i know this is dumb and i've admitted i don't like difficult games maybe if i bump it down to easy and like i just want to run around i want it to be challenging but it's so close to being fun because i think they want you to be more technical than i want it to be you gotta scan and you have these very fine margins on where if you want to use their weaknesses that you have to hit. And what, of course, they don't just put one enemy in a field. There's a whole freaking butt ton of them. And there's things flying, shooting at you. There's things far away, shooting, shocking bombs at you. There's these tigers running around. Then there's other things shooting lasers. It's all going on at once. It's just miserable. It's like, it's too difficult. So, I just want to go there and just go ham on some machines. So you don't really expect Aloy to be like a hardworking woman. You want things to be, you want her to have like an easier go of the, of the adventure. <laughs> well, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out why you don't like this game. I went down the list of uh, rules for Albanian women. Um, appearance is critical. That seems to meet uh, the, one of their, one of their thing. reputation is important for Albanian women. Apparently um, cooking is a must is one of the things they say. But then it says, you know, number nine, expect a hardworking woman. And it sounds like you do not expect a hardworking woman. And that might be why you don't like the game. I just, I've heard so much good things about this game and you don't like it. And I think knowing your proclivity towards Albanian women and seeing how this lines up with, uh, how this game lines up with the, the 10 things you must know about Albanian women. I see the sticking point right there is you are not expecting a hardworking woman um, and you should be expecting a hardworking woman and Aloy on this game. Um, that being said, yeah, the game looks like I would enjoy playing it for about 30 minutes and then I would have to do something off the non-critical path. I'd have to craft something and I would just get frustrated. So yeah, I could, I totally see what you're feeling like. It's kind of like when I played Breath of the Wild, which everybody loved. I played for maybe about 10 hours, like you said, and then it just got to a point where it's like, I just don't. I don't feel like playing it anymore. I just don't feel like it because I don't know what, I don't want to do this. Yeah. There's some aspects of the game. I do like there are these little metal flowers and like ancient artifacts that you have to go out of your way to find. I enjoy doing that, finding those that challenge, but just it's the battles. Like they're just so grueling. Like give me an easy battle. I'm level 28. And it says the level you need to be is 18 and I get rocked. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't understand. I don't, Maybe you're I, like missing something, but he, I, I do want to ask you now, you were excited about Forbidden West, Horizon Zero Dawn 2, Forbidden West. Um, do you, what, what could you see in the sequel for this game to get you re-excited for the PlayStation 5 version of Forbidden West? Oh, it took a huge hit, man. Huge hit. And the issue that I'm seeing, I'm probably still going to purchase it because I feel like it's going to have to be a must play. But the issue I have with the game is the main gameplay element. It's the fact that they want you to analyze each animal, figure, whatever it is, and figure out what its weakness is and exploit it. And if there's 10 enemies there, you got to isolate them and take them out one by one. Cause there's no way with 
what I have seen. And I mean, it's pretty obvious if there's some way to kill multiple enemies and there's not. So I don't like that. I don't want to do that. I want to almost Rambo it and go in there and start shooting arrows. Like that's fun. But then also it's not even that. It's even when you exploit their weaknesses, they have so much health and it takes so many shots to kill them. It's not fun. If it was like you found a a small weakness and it took two shots and they died, okay, that's challenge, that's reasonable. But when these birds in the sky, they're constantly moving, that you have to have pinpoint accuracy, you hit them in their weak spot with the arrow that it says they're weak to and it takes a 12th of their health out. And there's three of them? Like, what is that? It's garbage. I'm done talking about it. Alex, I was going to wait till segment two, but I feel bad ending a segment on such a sour note. So I'm going to be honest. After playing Horizon, I I felt bad. I was kind of down. I was like, okay, maybe I need to take a break from gaming. What is this? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just wait for the next big game. But I, I got wretched out of the water. I was drowning, buddy, and I came back. Dude, until dawn. Let's go. I wasn't going to say much, but before we got on, I was playing that game. I went from a game in Horizon that I didn't want to play anymore to a game I can't stop playing. I don't want to stop. It is so good. So it is, if you haven't played it, it's a horror-type game. I wish I remember what year it came out. Well, I'm talking Long time to ago. Yeah, exactly. Can you look it up while I'm sitting here talking? Sure. So Until Dawn is essentially an interactive movie. If you've played Black Mirror Bandersnatch, it's almost identical, except the fact that you have a controller. There's a few more inputs. They're very trivial. But the game is, I don't know, it's so good. First, it still looks very good on the PS5. It must have had, what, did it come out for the PS4 or is it just like PS, upgraded? PS4 2015. I don't know. I don't think they did anything special for the PS5. Okay. But it came well, out in 2015. It still looks good. Like the people yeah. definitely look still, you know, video gameish. But anyhow, besides the fact, it looks really good. The plot is real good. I love the fact that in the game, they tell you it's, let's see. I think it's after the fact you make a decision and it's all based on the butterfly effect where a seemingly insignificant choice can lead to a drastic outcome and consequence later in your life, or in this case, later in the game. And so there are, you make so many choices and a lot of them really don't matter, but there are a few, not a few, there, there's several here that when seemingly it's not that important of a choice, you make it and it alerts you that, okay, the butterfly effect has happened and you have chosen a path that is going to alter the lives of these teenagers who have gone into a Canadian cabin for a nice getaway. So I don't want to jump too far into this, Alex. I just want you to know that this is an incredible game. I know it's going to turn a lot of people off because it's an interactive movie. It's not really a game, but it is... uh, it, it brought me back. I'm back in it, baby. I went from being in the lows of the lows and I am riding. I, I just, I, I tweeted this week, uh, two days ago when I started the game, I lit a market peach candle from Bath and Body Works. I turned all the lights off, playing there on my big Sony X90 TV, sitting there on my couch with my PS5. Dude, I could not, it, life couldn't get better. Does this game interest you at all, Alex? This game's interested me for a long time, and I never quite knew what kind of game it was because it, you know, it the cover looks like a horror game. It might be scary, but it's not like Resident Evil, like you're not shooting or anything like that, right? It's just kind of an adventure game where you're maybe solving some riddles or puzzles and, I, and choosing how the story goes. I mean, not even any puzzles. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there are interactions like you can shoot some people, but it's more of like... Like okay, a quick time event? Yeah, exactly. And then okay. like you're running and to avoid obstacles, you have to hit a square or a triangle yeah. or a circle. So it's very minimal, but it it's so low key and it's just done very well. Like an interactive movie. So yeah, I mean, 
I played, uh, what was it called? Walking Dead season one. Just just like this kind of thing, what you're describing. Absolutely fantastic game. So I could see why somebody would really enjoy this. Um, it's also odd that Until Dawn Rush of Blood, which is a very, very interactive, it is a rail shooter, which is almost the antithesis of this kind of game, also made by these people. Adam, did you know that they have new games coming out now, uh, story-based games, the Dark Pictures Anthology? Have you heard of those? I haven't, but... I've so here's the surprising thing. I forgot that this was done by Supermassive Games. So yeah. here's I knew that Until Dawn Rush of Blood was awesome, but it was awesome because it was done in VR and it was done exceedingly well and it was just a good game. I kind of creepy, but I, I attributed a lot of that to virtual reality. After playing this game and loving the plot, I'm much more interested. And the reason I would have been on the fence earlier is because. It's confusing to me how this game is so good and the inpatient who was also made by supermassive games suck so bad. So yeah. I, I don't know what happened to the inpatient, but this was good enough to kind of smooth the inpatient over and say, I don't know, maybe they got a bad plot line or something. And the, the other game the anthology, anthologies, I, you yeah. know, what? I may take a little look, see. Yeah, just one just came out, just, or it's about to come out. One just came out, and one's about to come out. Just came out is uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope and Dark Pictures Anthology Man of Medan. I've heard good things about those. Adventure games kind of like Until Dawn. New one coming out soon in 2021, Dark Pictures Anthology House of Ashes. That's going to be a PlayStation 5 game. So just Ooh. to kind of get you a little bit hyped, Adam, I, I'm, I'm kind of excited that you like these kind of games. Um, looking at the PlayStation Plus free games, I think you might want to try, uh, what's it called? It's that robot game, which I know turns you off. Oh, crap, what is it? If you say Wally, -E, I'm going to no, be no, 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 no. Oh, I really, I, I have to figure out what this game is. I'm clicking right now. Trying okay, to well, while you, look, while you looked that up, the, the last couple points I want to make is that this game would be exceptional if you had a significant other or a friend that you're around a lot that would go through this with you. From what I could tell, it's about a 10-hour experience. And so for me, I talked about doing this with a friend, but we were like, if we meet every two hours every weekend, like that's going to take five weekends. We had Christmas. We were just saying it probably wasn't worth it. He was on the fence anyhow. But if you have your wife or a close buddy, this would be awesome because they give you enough time to quickly discuss what option you want to do. And I think that would make it even more enjoyable. And then this game is so successful. Everyone I know likes it. And after playing it, I now understand why they like it and totally agree with. So I'm kind of surprised that there weren't more games in this same type of, I guess, device a plot device trying to use kind of interactive movie and interactive game type category. I don't know any other games like this. There's a ton of them, man. I got a list. Oh, really? Of them then I guess play. I just don't know yeah. any. Okay. You you need to play Walking Dead season one. It'll feel janky, but it kind of started off this whole thing. Um, you probably don't care about zombie games. I didn't care about Walking Dead, but that game was just Chef's Kiss. Um, <clears throat> you need to play uh, Tales from the Borderlands. I don't care about Borderlands, but that plot is great. Great action adventure game um another one it's free so you should give it a shot detroit become human it's on the playstation plus thing um it's really heavy-handed plot stuff but it's the kind of game that i think you would enjoy because it would be one of those games that kind of blows your mind uh plot wise i've heard so, that but i thought it was an actual game i didn't know it was like this interactive it's an it's an it's an actual game in the sense that until dawn is an actual game. So yeah, you need to try that out. It's out on the PlayStation plus, uh, you know, collection or whatever that came out. So definitely we finished until dawn do that, but there's a handful of other games. I forget. There's one about like the teenagers in high school that people love. Um, I think you almost bought it, but <clears throat> the sequel just came out recently too. Either way. Yeah. I'm glad to hear these things about until dawn though. Cause I was always interested in it. I, you know, to cleanse my palate after cyberpunk, I also wanted to have a, a good note to end on playing some games. I dove into Days Gone as part of the PlayStation Plus collection, like we talked about, because I heard that it had some uh, some extra beef added to it for the PlayStation 5. And I only play a handful of hours, but the game looks great on PlayStation 5. Frame rate, 60 frames per second. 
looks 4k to me on my 4k tv i don't have the most discerning eyes so everything looks great i think the only thing that looks last gen is maybe just like the animation but it's not horrible it just looks a bit stilted which we even see like in spider-man miles morales and stuff too so it's not not terrible the way i describe this game though is like a, a discount last of us it's a zombie post-apocalypse game third person shooter getting materials and crafting them trying to find some loved one who's been stolen from you um, it just seems to have less of the heavy handed story elements and more uh, of the open world elements where you, you have a motorcycle and you're driving around Oregon on a motorcycle fighting hordes and hordes of zombies rather than fighting these, uh, you know, uh, little clumps of humans and then little clumps of zombies. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't have much to say. Adam, did you like the combat of Last of Us or did you like the story of Last of Us? What is is there anything about Last of Us you want more of? I think it was a combination. I don't think either part of The Last of Us blew me away, but they were both very good. And so the combination of those made it, made it a great game. Yeah. I, you know, I've heard about the story beats of this game. I don't know if there's anything excellent in it. I think it's just serviceable and, and inoffensive and probably like decent, like B tier movie. Uh, the combat right now feels good ish, nothing spectacular. It just seems serviceable. I'm hoping that as a game develops and you get more stuff, that it becomes more fun to fight these massive gobs of zombies. I really hope there's not as much stealth as The Last of Us, but right now it seems like a decent, decent, uh, decently good time. I might be more motivated though to just go ahead and buy Ghost of Tsushima and make that the PlayStation 4 game that I'm going to focus on until some of these next gen games come out. Dude, play Until Dawn, man. It's so good. <laughs> you just, you want to do an Until Dawn episode. That's what I'm hearing. Dude, it's, and the great thing is, last thing before we go into break, because we're going a little long, is once I played Until Dawn, it opened my eyes to Rush of Blood. Everything in the Rush of Blood has a, uh, what do you call it? A purpose, a connection, uh, meaning? A connection, that's good enough, yeah. yeah. It has a connection to Until Dawn, which if you haven't played it, you just think it's creepy. There's a connection to everything, which looking back makes me appreciate Rush of Blood even more that they based it on this game that's just so creepy. And an older game, like you wouldn't think it would age that well, and uh, yet it's still incredible. So thank you for listening to us as we talk about four games here in segment one. When we come back in segment two, we're going to talk about some listener feedback just on some YouTube, some Twitter. And then we got a, a decent amount of PS5 news. So stick around for that. Enjoy the break. We'll see you here in a bit. You're back with Play PS5, the podcast, the most festive podcast, because it is Christmas time up in here. And Alex, you want to know what more I love in my stocking than reindeer droppings? What more do you, what, what? I know I said that like an idiot. <laughs> I love the comments of our fans. I love them so much. I adore them more than my own children. So here's the thing. We're going to start having a segment where we talk about just some of the random comments people. Because they're the, they're, I mean, we don't know all these people personally, but they're funny. Sometimes they're inquisitive, informative, but either way, we love them. So the first one I want to mention is by Sar Peter. I made a video about the essential PS4 games that you've got to play on the PS5. And his comment was all of the games, literally, <laughs> which sounds a little, um, what's the word, sarcastic? But here's the thing, Alex, that's not true. I played this little game, this little game called 18 Floors. That was garbage. You know, you do not want to play that game on the PS5. You don't want to play that game on the PS4. You don't want to play that game at all. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's literally PS4 games that can't play on the PS5. If <laughs> we're gonna get, if we're gonna get literal with it, sorry, Peter. Oh, come at me, bro. 
Yeah, but he's a star. You're just you're not. So you saw low level plebe, man. Plebe. Um yeah, also corporate zombie, dude's been hitting us up. Um, he mentioned Adam, I wasted so much time last week trying to explain to you what a roguelike was. Totally missed the fact. Thanks, corporate zombie, for for throwing this out there. Persistence, our play PSVR game of the year for whatever that was, 2018, is a roguelike. It's a first-person VR roguelike in every sense of the word. I should have just said that, so you would know. If you weren't such an idiot, you could have saved 10 minutes of conversation because I love the persistence. It was my top PSVR game for a long, long time. It is exceptional. If you have a VR and you haven't played it, it is a must-play. It's flat now, too. It is now official that, you know, I'm, um, I like roguelikes. That's just how it is. Roguelike Adam. I think that's rule number 11 of Albanian women. It just says likes roguelikes. So yeah, you're on the right path, Adam. Yes. (laughs) Finally, we got pinapple. It looks like pineapple, but it's not pinapple YouTube. And he's questioning. We made a video about when you should sell your PS4, how much, where should you sell it? All that stuff. And he says, is this still a valid video? Because the PS5 came out a month ago and planning on to sell it once I transfer my PS4 data to the PS5, meaning he's going to sell his PS4 and he's wondering if that video is still valid. Listen, everything we say is valid at all stages of life. It is just as useful to your fetus as it will be when your fetus is 85. So Adam, is- let's, let's do a bean bet right now. How much do you think? How much do you think PlayStation Four, a PlayStation Four Pro console, is going for right now on eBay? Here's what I'm going to do. I'll look it up on eBay. I'll see what the most recent sold PlayStation Four console went for, and we could do an over under. You want to do that? There's too many variables. There's no. It, it there's could no. Be a special edition. It could. It's a bean bet, man. It's a bean bet. Is I'm going to hit ending ending most recent. Oh. Come on, it's a bean bet. You're going to watch me eat a barf. And it sold. Yeah, the most the, recently sold one. The most recently sold. Is you this set the just line console? Up. How about games, controllers? I'm going to type in PlayStation 4 Pro console. Who knows what's going to come up with it? It's probably going to come with some games and controllers, but that usually doesn't factor in too much. So that's so it's a crapshoot is what you're it's, saying. Yeah, so you set the line. I'll, I'll pick the over Is this under. including shipping or not shipping? We won't include shipping. We're going to look at that number that comes up. The auction has ended at this price. I am going to say... Two hundred and five dollars. Two hundred and five dollars. I'm going to pick the over on that one, my friend. If it's over two hundred and five dollars, are you doing it right now? Did you just cheat? No, no. I'm gonna double check because I don't. I don't. PlayStation Four Pro console. I'm searching on eBay right now, and then I'm going to set the filter to having sold. Come on, come on. You should just go ahead and start spinning for your bean right now. Oh, I don't have the beans right here with me. We'll have to be next week. Sold items and then ended recently. Oh, my God. I'm such an idiot. Oh, Oh, I forgot this is eBay, man. And I should have done shipping. I'm so dumb. The most recent one, Sony PlayStation 4 Pro, one terabyte, jet black with two games and two cables, Sold for $169.99. Oh, get rocks. $62 shipping. Had I gone for the shipping, oh, I would have won. Oh, 69 all the way, baby. Because the next one, under all of the other ones under that, $285, $270, $350, dollars i am an idiot. That most recent one, $169. I should have known. All right. Well, here we go. Dude, here, here's the thing. Who is paying almost ps5 prices for a ps4 uh parents who said they'd get their kids a ps5 and couldn't find one and are coming up short right before christmas and i'm spinning it right here oh you got the beans all yeah, right i got the beans right, already right. man I'm, I'm i'm here for this man i'm here for I'm this excited. we're having a party rule number seven of albanian women party mode is on so oh, oh i just kicked that yeah. thing way over there <laughs> oh my gosh you're a friggin' mess there we go. All right, it landed on juicy pear or booger. Oh, juicy pear or here. booger. You see that you approve juicy yep, pear yep, or booger? Yep, I do approve. All that right, looks muy bueno. Mm. Mm. Let's see what it is. It tastes it? sweet at first, but it always ends up being something 
That's a juicy pair. You got a juicy pair. Congrats, juicy my pair. friend. It's Thanks, about man. time you uh, actually won one for the team. Tastes, it okay. tastes a little bit like a booger, though. Sometimes I think they get mixed up. Anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, other oh, mixed up. <laughs> other comment. Um, that guy is Will VR. Similar video, Adam. He says, what's awesome about the PS5 is that if there's ever a lack of releases, you can always go back and play one of the hundreds of amazing PS4 titles. Now, we kind of just went through the, the, the crux of this whole episode is some of these PS4 titles that are supposed to be amazing suck. I think Will specifically is talking about you need to be playing Uncharted 3 and 4, Adam. You played through Uncharted 2, am I correct? I did, and it, it was definitely better than Horizon, but it wasn't that great, Will. I'm sorry, buddy. What I'm going to do, bar none, is I'm going to work to get our YouTube up to 250 subs because once we do that, Alex is going to play Kingdom Hearts 2, and then I'm going to play it with him because I'm about ready to play the whole series again, baby. I still have that. The You sent me the disc, and it, it is a coaster right now. I um, hate you. <laughs> Here's the, Okay. The one topic that uh, I'm my own daddy, that's a Twitter name, he mentions, I've never heard this, Alex, but apparently mm -hmm. his dual sense is having a big issue with controller drift, both in Astro's Playroom and now Cyberpunk. I, I definitely have no issue with this. I'm wondering... Yeah. Like what distance is he? A, I, maybe it's a bad controller. That's really weird. Yeah. I don't mean, I, I'm guessing it's a bad controller. I mean, I hear about this thing with the um, crap. What's it called? The Nintendo switch. People have the joy, the joy cons on that. The, uh, the analog sticks aren't great on that. They kind of lose their sensitivity, lose their sense of direction. I have not heard about that for the dual sense and for something as expensive as a dual sense, you'd really hope it doesn't work. So I would certainly look into getting that replaced because that sounds absolutely terrible for such a delicate controller as the dual sense but no i haven't noticed it in astro cyberpunk maybe i'm just not as abusive with my controller as uh as i'm my own daddy that guy is um and yeah. also my thought how horrible is this alex so i'm thinking i'm assuming that he has one one controller probably got it with the ps5 it was packaged in. i doubt he has an extra one so if you go and get, here's my thought. If I were in his position, I would go and purchase an extra controller because you should have one anyhow. Get that controller. See if it exhibits drift. If it does, it seems like that's a PS5 issue and you need to contact. Oh, hopefully that's not the case. But if the second dual sense is okay, then you know maybe it's something with the controller. How horrible of a human would you have to be to then package the first dual sense into the package of the second dual sense and take it back to the store? I think it depends on the store and if they've ever had like they've ever wronged you in some way. Like for example, I went to Walmart. Should that once. matter? Yeah, it, that, it matters. It, it matters. It's, it's, eth it's a personal ethics here. I went to Walmart once and I went and I, I got a bunch of groceries and I I forgot to grab the bag of eggs and I think underwear. I got all my other stuff, forgot to grab that bag. And I, I went out to the, you know, I never grab a receipt when I do these things because just who cares? I went out, I drove all the stuff home, realized I left my eggs and underwear at Walmart. <laughs> I drove back to get it because I was an undergrad student. This stuff is important. I drove back to get it, walk in there, walk up to the register, same woman who checked me out. And I said, hey, I forgot to grab these bags. They're sitting right there. And the woman was like, no, 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 you don't have the receipt. You can't take that. You can't take that. You don't have the receipt to prove you can't take that. She just checked me out like five minutes ago. Ever since then, I've had a longstanding beef with Walmart. If I can ever nickel and dime money away from them, you better believe I'm doing it. Talking about breaking my controller, going to buy a second one, going to put it in the second box, take it back, make them eat that cost. Walmart can eat my butt. <laughs> so there you go. If you're your own daddy, you can probably do that. So that's something I would consider. The next are the controller updates. There is an update for the DualSense controller. I'm going to be honest, Alex. I have been too busy enjoying Until Dawn to stop and plug the controller into the PS5 because you have to actually use yeah. the cord. I don't got time for that, man. I game hard. It tells so, you every time you turn it on, plug it in. Do you want to yep. update? And you say no. Absolutely. Right? 
remind me later. I Yeah, the last thing I want to do is get up off my couch with my old man back and try to make it over across the living room to plug my plug my PlayStation controller into the console. This is, what is this? Is this make- a self? I don't even know a good old man joke to make. Um, yeah, I, I don't think my controller is ever going to get updated. I think I just have a new menu that pops up on my PlayStation 5 <laughs> forever. <laughs> One day I am going to be sick of seeing it, though, and I'm just going to pull it. Because I'm sure it's not going to take long to update. But it's just like, yeah, it's all about when do you turn it on. If you're mm-hmm. already sitting in your seat, you aren't getting up. That's just how yeah. it is. This just this is the new loading screen for my PlayStation Five. It's talking about my controller needing an update. Um, yeah, so we're moving on to the news now, Adam. Adam, I know you don't care about Spider Man. You should care about Spider Man. It's one of the best games on the PlayStation Four. One of the best games on the PlayStation Five. There are free updates for Spider Man. So before with Miles Morales or the remastered edition, you had the option of performance mode, which is sixty frames per second and less visuals and whatnot, but sixty frames per second. Or the fidelity mode that has all the ray tracing and, and all the motion blur, all the fancy stuff, but it's down at 30 frames per second. The issue is once you go performance mode and you play like more than 10 seconds in that mode, you cannot go back to fidelity mode because the 30 frames per seconds just looks so chunky. Fortunately, they just released a new update for both Miles Morales and the remastered version of Spider-Man. It is performance plus ray tracing mode. What they've done is they've reduced some of the stuff like population density and things like that, which I don't care about. And they've turned down the knob a little bit on some of the enhanced visuals, but you still get some of the fun PlayStation 5 stuff without sacrificing the 60 frames per second. This is what I'm talking about. This feels next gen and it looks great and it feels great. And I'm super excited they're doing that. Just in time for me to start playing Spider-Man Remastered. What a fun game that is. What a great showcase that is. Adam, does it get you boned up? Does it get you six to midnight thinking about this? I mean, it does, but not for this game. So, What game then? If if you're so cool, what game are you talking about? Dude, I'm talking about Until Dawn. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Upgrade <laughs> Until Dawn. And I'm, I'm sad. Here's the thing about Until Dawn. I don't know who this Hayden Pantatier chick is, but she's in that game too. Is she's she? In, she was married to Vladimir Klitschko. Dude, she was in Kingdom Hearts. I like this chick. She knows she, how to roll. She is definitely not Albanian. I know definitely she's not, not Albanian. But, yeah. but she's still attractive and... And she's in all these video games. How Adam, cool you it? and I, let's uh, pull back the curtain a bit. You and I lived in Nashville at the same time. Do you know she was living in Nashville at that exact same time? We crossed paths with her regularly, probably. Uh, I didn't know. Had I known that she played Kyrie, I would have definitely. You ever Actually, walked I, down? I, at that point, I didn't play Kingdom Hearts, so I walk, wouldn't have known. Walking downtown, you would have just heard Kyrie talking to you, and you would have been like, ah! Oh! And then you would not be some soy boy Sora and she would not have been interested. F you. Sackboy <laughs> online multiplayer has been enabled. And I'm, this is a game, Alex, that you know I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. So here's here's what I did, Adam. I had a lazy weekend with my daughter. Uh, there wasn't much going on. The weather was too cold to go outside. Can't really do much because of COVID. So I decided to play video games with my daughter, and I wanted to get her hyped about a new game. I wanted to get her hyped about the PlayStation 5. So I pulled the trigger, dropped 60 fat ones on Sackboy, which is expensive as hell for a game of that stature. Mm -hmm. I started playing with her and we had a really fun time. It's a great couch co-op game. It has a lot of, you know, very simple mechanics, although it's still charming. So I'm having a good time with it. She gets upset because I get more of the, uh, you know, coins and whatnot, just because I beat up the bad guys and she doesn't want to. She enjoys the fact that she can customize her character however she wants. It's all full of whimsy, super fun. If you got like young kids you want to play with, this is a perfect game for that. The online multiplayer makes it more exciting because now I can play with Adam. Although I, I really, Adam, I don't know if you're going to enjoy it that much. It's like a less, it's like a less excellent version of Astro Boy or Astro Bot. So mm. maybe if it goes on sale, I, this has PlayStation Plus written all over it. Talk like in three or four months, you know, like this is going to be a PlayStation plus free title. I can feel it in my bones, feel it in my nards. That said, my daughter does not want to play this game anymore. For some reason, I, we had, we eat dinner. We're sitting down trying to figure out what to do for the evening. I said, do you want to play sack boy? And she says, no, I don't. And I don't uh, know why. Well, she hates you. 
Hates well, me probably, yeah. The good news is that I can get one on 40 for 45 on eBay. Is that and, cheaper or more expensive than what you sold Godfall for? Uh, that is definitely cheaper. I sold Godfall for 55. Mm. So speaking of Godfall, moving on the list, the Godfall roadmap has released, everybody. Uh, it's been revealed. The developers have let us know what they plan to do with Godfall uh, right off the bat. There are some bug fixes. They fixed a lot of stuff, apparently. None of it seemed relevant to me when I was reading through the list, so I, I won't uh, bore you guys to tears. It mo mostly seemed like they made some of the bosses more difficult because the game was just button mashy to beat. Until um, the end, when I went for the Platinum, the Tower of Ascension is literally impossible. I did research. The only two people to have Platinum that game got to it within the first week the game released and there was a glitch in the tower of ascension to where the enemies wouldn't attack you so they got they rose all the way through the tower of ascension <laughs> and got the platinum trophy but then they soon fixed that and now it is literally impossible so your player level maxes at 50 you can't go above that which i could see so at some point once you hit 50 what you're going to do you, it then is about skill and optimizing your equipment and all that other garbage. It's impossible. I can't find anyone else who has platinum well, it once they fixed it. It's compounded by the fact that that trophy is you have to do this long thing for a long time and win without dying. The game is having horrible crashing glitches. So people will get to like the end about to beat that and then their game crashes and they lose all progress. So it, I could not do that twice if that happened to me. Um, the one thing of note that I thought was interesting, uh, actually just terrible, is that in quarter two, 2021, they plan to release some paid DLC. Now, I obviously misinterpreted what I heard in the game's announcements that when they release this game, they're going to release all the information. You buy the game, you get it all. Um, apparently, that's not true. And people seem to have known that. There's DLC you got to pay for now. I feel, I feel swindled to a degree, although I really don't care about this game, so whatever. Um, but apparently it was, oh no, it was just microtransactions we weren't going to have. They're still going to be paid DLC. A turd of a game is just getting turdier and turdier, and I, I don't want to deal with it anymore. I'm going to try to, I need to try to sell it for like 40 bucks as well and try to get this next game that just got a release date announced, Adam, Control Ultimate Edition. Um, Control was a one of the late generation PS4 games. Uh, one of the first games to showcase ray tracing on PC. Uh, Adam, do you like the X-Files or Twin Peaks? Any of that weird, like, pseudo-paranormal, but still kind of, uh, I don't know, normal stuff? I like Twin Peaks. X-Files sucked. F that. Twin okay. Peaks was good for a while, but it kind of it kind of got too slow there. Um, I forgot yeah. at what point I dropped off. But I, I, I do kind of like that stuff. I think thematically control can be like that, but I think it goes more into some of the crazier stuff. It, I have a feeling you'd like it because I know the gunplay and stuff is supposed to be good. I was holding off on playing this game until a PlayStation 5 version was coming out, and that's what the Ultimate Edition is. It's the PlayStation 5 version of Control. This game won Game of the Year at a handful of places. It looks and sounds like an excellent game. February 2nd is just around the corner, so I'll sell Godfall, hold on to that cash, and buy Control Ultimate Edition when it finally comes out. Um, and I, I think unless you have anything else, Adam, I think that's about it for the, the big news that I want to touch upon. Uh, it's, it's not news. But one thing I do have to say, Alex, is obviously we had a podcast play PSVR, the podcast before this, and we still obviously love VR. But I have now been several months without VR and especially playing Horizon, playing Heroes of Hammerwatch, playing Astros Playroom. I've gotten the itch that I miss VR. It hit me with the allure of a new console and new graphics and a new controller. Sometimes you that covers up some stuff mm -hmm. that your that your heart is missing. And once those those things have passed, is come to my realization especially when I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn, I was like, you know what? Maybe it's not VR. VR changes the game, man. And I don't know how much you play VR if you've played VR, 
but have you missed it? Because I'm getting to the point. I am now I have my adapter. I am now because I did sell my camera. I'm having, I'm thinking about looking for a new camera. And although I don't have any new PSVR titles, it's, it's just, it's next level, man. VR changes the game and I'm missing it. I'm, I'm missing VR, although I still play it. My daughter likes to play Job Simulator and I, you know, we, we busted out Megaton Rainfall recently and it, it's great. I love that game so much and a lot of people don't, but I, I thought it was excellent. Um, yeah, there's, there's still a lot of life left in the PlayStation VR and it is made better by the PlayStation 5, if not visually in terms of enhancements visually, load times. Things are so much faster. Megaton Rainfall, I remember sitting around a whole lot waiting for that stuff to load. It's a lot faster now. I, it's Man, yeah. Get you a camera. Play some PSVR, man. It's it's still good. Also, shout out to Dreams. That game is going nuts on. I saw some of the stuff people have made on the PlayStation 5. It's looking better than Cyberpunk, that's for sure. It's ridiculous what people are doing there. Get your VR, play Dreams, and just go explore some of these crazy environments. It is, yeah. Next Next generation, indeed. Um, Dude, I, I I miss Battlezone. I want to play Battlezone. I want to be in Battlezone. I want Battlezone to be in me. So we still got Sniper Elite VR to come out. We do, we do. And I haven't played Area X in months. Mm, we Maybe. need to see. We haven't done a PlayStation Five Area X recap. No, my maybe that's. I feel this weight on my soul. And it, it feels like I just, I'm getting beaten down. And I thought it was this year and I thought it was COVID, but I think it's because I haven't played Area X in a long time. Yeah. Well, we should play some Area X. But Adam, let's close up this podcast so I can go play some, uh, I don't even know what I'm going to play. I'm going to play some games because I have some energy, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, thank you for listening to Play PS5, the podcast. Rule number nine of dating Albanian women, share something in common with us on this podcast. We're both marriage material. And in that spirit, please marry us. Marry us on YouTube. Marry us on Twitter. Marry us in our emails at contact at playps5podcast.com. Invite your auntie to the wedding because just like with rule number one of dating Albanian women, family is really important. And remember, comment and subscribe on YouTube or email us to earn a chance to win 12 months of PlayStation Plus. Woo! Talk about playing gay the days, days gone, <laughs> games gone, games gone, days gone. What, what's another game on PlayStation Plus? Detroit Zero Hour? Adam, getting long in the tooth over here, man. Help me out. Also, we got some Christmas cards to send out. Email us your address. We'll send you one. I don't even care. You can live in Albania. I don't even care. And with that, rule number 10. Don't play with yourself. Play PS5.